Good afternoon everyone and um, welcome to this workshop about new professionals organized on the second day of the Europeana Conference 2022. Firstly, I would like to thank the European, the European Initiative for giving this opportunity to present the results from the third SAC meeting celebrated in Madrid last June. As the European Foundation was a partner in the event, we think this event in DIAC is a perfect occasion to show how we organize an international event what we could have done better, and what new professionals can learn from our experience in a practical way. So, now... I would like to introduce the people that, that we are really moderating this workshop. In my case, my name is Raul Gomez Hernández, and a board member of the AGPC, before named as Isaac Madrid, and a PhD candidate at Complutense University of Madrid and the University of Edinburgh in the Union Europa Joint Doctorate in Cultural Heritage. Next to me is Miguel Barroso Cruz. I'm, a, I'm the former president of AGPC, or a, a previously called Isaac Madrid, and also just finished my master in Cultural Heritage Studies in UCL. Um, that, that's basically it. So uh, I'm, I, now it's time, that's a turn for Aliki. Hello, everybody. I'm Aliki Ganak. I'm from Greece. I have studied law. My master is in public international law. I'm a lawyer and I currently work in, in the field of international law. My PhD research is dedicated to the safeguarding of intangible cultural heritage and the public international law. I'm also one of the persons that were selected this year by ISAC, Europe and Austria and the European Heritage Tribune as a European Heritage Youth Ambassador for 2022. And I'm actually really happy that we're here today. And the meeting of Zach uh, of last year is the stimulus to talk because I don't know, if, Raul, if I ever told you, but uh, it was the stimulus for me to apply and become a member of Isaac in the first place. And then all this way came along. So we'll have the opportunity to say more later. Um, finally, is Theo Candeas, that is also a European Heritage Health Ambassador from European Nostra Isaac on the European Heritage Tribune, too, and also as Aliki uh, was a participant in the third Act meeting celebrated in Madrid last June. In this short presentation, because it's, it's it's only around 15 minutes. You will know the background of the third such meeting, the previous actions we undertook, the main highlights and characters of the event, as speakers, partners, and all the editorial work behind the proceedings we present today as an international level. Well, before starting this presentation, I would like to explain that ISAC Madrid was the branch of the ISAC network who organized the third such meeting, but from this academic course, we were named as Asociación de Jóvenes por el Patrimonio Cultural, AGPC, because we would like to help new professionals in the cultural heritage sector, not only in the city of Madrid, but also in the whole of Spain, with the same European perspective as part of the ISAC network. And now, uh... And now we're going to talk about the Theresac meeting, but before starting with the meeting, uh, I would like to speak about the background of what the ISAC meeting is. As every year, the ISAC network celebrates an annual event where young professionals, students from the heritage field, share the in, in innovations and advances that they've been carried out uh, during that year. Uh, the previous meetings uh, were held, uh, the, first, the first meeting was held in Girona in 2018. And then the second one was in Genoa in 2019. And, uh, and following these examples, the three such meeting was, uh, was going to be hosted in Madrid in 2020. But due to the COVID-19 situation and, and, and the pandemic, it was postponed to 2021. The preparation and organization of this three such meeting in 2021 in Madrid, uh, whose main theme was the sustainability uh, of cultural heritage, could be summarized in four different, uh, in, in four different points. The first one is working on the actual logistics of the of the meetings. Uh, for example, uh, preparing the uh, the venue, uh, pre preparing the the online platform uh, because the meeting was a hybrid. Uh, it was a hybrid meeting. It was in person, but also uh, but also online. So we have to prepare a, a lot of a lot of technology 
about the the platform and and also the second point that we have is the call for papers the ISAC, the ISAC meeting had two different uh, types of uh, papers individual speakers and also we had posters so uh, we had to prepare a, an academic committee uh, in order to evaluate those posters and uh, and choose the most suitable ones for the for the meeting uh, and the speakers that were chosen to be participants of the of the meeting uh, receive a bursary that it, that it covered the travel expenses accommodation and also the cost of the COVID-19 test that were required in that in that moment and also the last point was the partnership the ISAC meeting uh, as you can see as you can see on the screen uh, had uh, quite a big number of partnership uh, uh, of partners uh, uh, from organizer uh, uh, and, and partners in itself that Raul uh, in the following slides is going to explain more about it but also while uh, while organizing the meeting, we face uh, two main problems. The, the first one, which is kind of obvious, is the COVID-19 situation that in, the, in, 2000, in, 2020, in 2021, the COVID-19 uh, regulation procedures uh, were changing every so often, especially when, uh, when traveling abroad. So we have uh, quite a lot of uh, problems with, uh, with bringing the speakers uh, to Spain. But we finally, but we finally uh, managed uh, to do it, and also we we faced some technological uh, issues, especially during uh, during the meeting when there was a massive security problem uh, globally that attacked attack different companies, including the technology uh, used for the streaming. So it was quite a bit of a problem. Uh, but after all this preparation and organization, we finally hosted the uh, the meeting, which, as you can see in the screen, this is the program that it has. Uh, the meeting had different types of sections. Uh, we had keynote speakers from uh, from relevant uh, Spanish and also international uh, organizations such as uh, such as uh, Ecomos Spain, uh, the Foundation Santa Maria Real, or for example the, uh, the European uh, European Heritage Youth Ambassadors. And also, it counted with different uh, workshops, from table and panel sessions by also the uh, uh, more institutions such as the European Foundation, Europa Nostra, ISAC, etc. And also, uh, besides, uh, it had the individual speakers uh, that it talked before in the call for papers. For example, we have one here, Aliki itself, is a, a, a speaker, and also Tiago, the online moderator, was a, a, was a speaker on the meeting. And, and finally, to finish uh, and finally to wrap up the meeting, we have a visit to the uh, to San Lorenzo Square uh, Monastery, which is was. Uh, to celebrate the, uh, the end of the meeting. So uh, here we have some uh, screenshots and photos taken of the meeting. Here we have the keynote speakers, the, the representative of e-commerce Spain and also the representative of the European Heritage, uh, of, uh, European Heritage volunteers. Some, uh, some pictures uh, both in person uh, and also online from, uh, from individual speakers and also some posters. And finally, we have uh, some Images about the words of and round tables that they, that they, that they were carried out uh, by different institutions that they uh, that they've already mentioned. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next point was uh, partners that we have. We have partners from in two levels. The in one case it was. Uh, not possible this meeting without the support of all these organizations as organizers or as partners in, in that way. So, so some of them were like uh, the ISAC network, the, the Complutense and Politecnica University of Madrid that holds the, the event, other ones like the group of cultural heritage of the, of the university that Funded some of the of these bursaries, also uh, Europa Nostra, Ecomos, or Europeana, organizing some of these events. At this time, uh, when we finished the third such meeting, there was more work to do. We worked together with the speakers and organizations who participated in the drafting of the papers and summary documents that were being included in these proceedings. After more than eight months of work between the editorial board and the speakers organizations, the proceeding is, was, is now available in a digital format in open access. 
you have now in this presentation the link that uh, it it is really easy to 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 remember because it is it's a sort link in that way and this includes uh, the full publication with all the summaries from the keynote speakers from the papers that were presented uh, the round tables that were done and also the poster oral presentations and cultural activities and for anyone who wants to uh, you have here in the in the meeting i think that we we, we can we can serve on on the zoom chat the the link for access to 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 the final proceedings if it's not place uh contact us so thank you very much for for for, for for this for this part and also to to know what are the challenges that we have done and what we have done in, in that moment so now is the time to start with with the working groups so what we have done is uh, th three groups that uh, the face-to-face -face, uh, groups they're going to be three in this auditorium the first one is going to be here with with, with the moderator aliki the sec with miguel the second one is going to be with me in the middle of the auditorium and the third one is going to be at the end the the, the first one is about challenges, opportunities, and barriers for young people organizing academic events. The second one is about creating partnerships and international dialogues between associations and organizations in cultural her her heritage sector. And the third one is going to be challenges, opportunities, and barriers on the participation of young people in academic events. Apart from them, in the online Zoom, uh, Tiago is going to be the, the online moderator and we're, we're going to work all together in a full group. So please, if you want to work on organizing academic events, uh, sit on the first front. If you want to work on partnerships on the second one, and if you want to uh, be part of the uh, challenge of participation of young professionals, sit on the on the back of the auditorium, please. For the people online, uh, in the audience, people are moving into their groups. If you want to participate within the online Zoom room, please get pa uh, please become part of the breakout room. So there is one breakout room, as I understand it correctly. And if you join that, you should be able to collaborate there. We have one collaborative Jamboard, and at the end, we will present uh, what has been put in that Jamboard um, here live for you all. We're all going to find our seats again because we were in different breakout groups. So in a second, we will have the presentation of what we just talked about. I want to say, first of all, thank you all for your uh, open, honest discussion. I saw a lot of fruitful discussion happening, laughs in the back, you know, uh, things that were being shared. So thank you so much for doing so. Um, my apologies for the technical issues that we had in our Zoom room. Um, one of our presenters um, apparently had a storm coming over their house, and so the internet broke down. Uh, so there's always a little bit of, of technology that uh, just makes things more difficult. But um, I think we're ready now to present what was talked about in uh, the breakout rooms of today. Uh, so I'd like to invite uh, Miguel Aliki and Raul back on stage to present the results on the Jamboard. Thank you. Well, you can, you can do it. No, that's yours. Oh. Okay, but okay, Dan. Uh, yeah. In in the group, I I, will, I have the pleasure to moderate. We were working on creating partnerships and international relationships. It was a really productive group, and 
one of the questions that we propose is what are the keys for creating a strong partnerships in that way? One of the ideas that they told is that uh, it's, it's very useful to, to, defini to, to define the roles that they are going to have and the add value that they, they are going to, to support to this project. Also to have a first perspective that could uh, be a, a good way to uh, connecting these young professionals with these senior uh, professionals in that way. The other line is uh, to have a low low barrier. It means to to have su uh, not starting from a a point that it's going to be difficult for young organizations to organize. So starting from from a simple and a simple plan and low barrier plan in that way. And also to have an open minded in in the way that we, we get open to new perspectives, also open to work with other ones that could have uh, less experience in that way. One of the opportunities in the second part that we, we are working on, it was an opportunities that could young professionals could have from this relationship. And mostly they are focused on experience, trust and generosity that there are three words in, in the way that could be something that they gain experience if the other partners have trust in in yours and in in what you believe in that way is a really good thing and you think that the things is going to go well and generosity too in in the same way and finally the these opportunities going go on volunteers, interns, and fellows that there are opportunities for, for young professionals to be involved in all these things, so events. So it's opportunity to connect with the uh, real professional world and to interact with other enterprises in, the, in that way. The other thing, there are difficulties that they have. Mostly they are focused on the age on the experience because there's lot, lots of professionals that they, they don't think that it's useful to have uh, less experience in, in a field and they only want to connect with professionals in the same level in that way. And it's very difficult for organization managed for young professionals to go in that way to connect with senior organizations. In in that part is also difficult for people to have, if they haven't uh, any skills or they're getting uh, skills, it's difficult to progress. So it's something that they have to take into account when they enter in, in this relationship and in the same organizations in that way. And finally, we propose some good practices that they could do from the experience of the, of the people who are involved in this group, like uh, keeping the door open to new opportunities and to new people, new ideas, first perspective, as we uh, told in that moment, and also to start their careers, that there was a debate on a place where on opportunities to, to know what the, the professional background of each one and how the professional careers have evolved to, to know that anything could be from different fields and m mostly it's not only one way and correct way to be uh, a professional in the cultural heritage sector in that way. So now is the time for uh, Liki. Uh, I can do it. Thanks. So, in uh, Group 3, we talked a bit about uh, participation of young persons, young people, uh, professionals and students in events related to culture heritage and international events, and also in their participation in the organizational part of all these events. And if we could summarize what we talked, it would be that their participation is not a goal of itself, but all the actors involved have a lot to gain from it both the young persons and the older ones. And if we could talk about, about uh, talk a little about the challenges, 
um, those people face, first of all, their need to manage time and stress when they're participating in those events. They need to face a challenge of hybrid events in a world uh, of post-COVID uh, pandemic and who knows what the future will bring us. Um, keeping people happy, I guess this goes to the organizational part, <laughs> not to the participation, since as a participant you may say whatever you want. And uh, we also discussed a bit about the gender balanced participation that is still um, an issue even today. And what about the barriers? We, we, we said a lot, uh, but uh, the most important maybe are the costs that young people have to face when they uh, want to participate in such events and even the time they don't have to, to be members of the organizational committees. Um, the challenge they face to select the right event to go to, um, since we, we have a myriad of events um, on the net and you have to search for that. Um, the lack of self-confidence, that is uh, also a great factor in young persons, among young persons, that mm, even for the first time they, they have to address the audience and talk in front of other peoples. And um, uh, of course we mentioned all the whole issue with unpaid internships and uh, volunteering that uh, is dominating the, fa the sector of cultural heritage and uh, just please let me mention one phrase that was heard in another conference that took place during these days, the future is heritage in Prague um, and I, I today read an article on that, uh, we need more jobs, real jobs, so young persons I believe need more real jobs. So please, Miguel, talk about the nice things now. <laughs> I'm going to talk about the opportunities that participating and organizing events can bring, especially for young people uh, <coughs> participating and organizing uh, academic or professional events uh, can bring the opportunity to meet uh, new people, not only young people that you will work with in the future, or, but also more experienced people that you can learn uh, from, you can learn from uh, I, a good amount of projects that you may never heard of, uh, of before. So th uh, that's always really useful. And also, in terms of the organization skills, you face uh, new problems that, uh, that, they will, uh, that they will offer you new perspectives uh, by facing those problems and developing skills in order to, to solve them. So, uh, so basically, it will help you to, to achieve or to get some experience on the field. That is always nice. And also, it will help you to uh, to develop yourself, uh, your self confidence, and your and knowing uh, your value in, in terms of your knowledge and skills, uh, which is uh, which is always nice. And now we're going to talk about the good practices that should be carried out when participating and also organizing events. Uh, here, uh, here we have uh, quite a lot of them. So to uh, to so, uh, uh, to summarize, uh, basically for young people, is making. Uh, your work in a uh, noticeable uh, by volunteering and getting uh, uh, getting good uh, opportunities but in this case as Aliki mentioned the conditions uh, may not be idea uh, uh, may not be uh, uh, ideal especially uh, usually and all, uh, and also uh, young people should engage more with uh, with with the professionals and also another young people in order to develop this uh, this uh, this network and uh, and finally, uh, we would like to mention in terms of a uh, heritage shop, it would be nice to it would be nice to develop a better uh, intensive or uh, as was mentioned to have an apprenticeship uh, apprenticeship that it will help a uh, young professional to develop their skill better than uh, in, 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 than the by working closely for a longer period of time with professionals that uh, which uh, that which also can be really relevant for a young professional. Now, uh, if we have five minutes, we, we nope. <laughs> uh, we we cannot any, any idea that that you have with the blue box, the microphone, or something. I'm afraid we won't have time for questions uh, anymore today. But I do really want to thank you. And um, maybe where could people get in touch with you, or if we, or with ASAC if they want to continue this conversation online or in person? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much. Um, 
Luis Miguel, uh, Raul Miguel and Aliki for your presentation. Uh, we'll have uh, a short break of 15 minutes now, and then after that we will come back for the closing remarks of the day by Mr. G, who will use the power of words to show what today was all about. Um, let's have one last hand for the people from ASAC for their beautiful session. Thank you. Thank you.